Welcome back to Secondhand Overland. I'm your host, Matt Kester. Today we're gonna do arts and crafts. Doesn't sound very fun, but you'll see. You see, I live in Arizona. Every year, a little thing called fire restrictions happens. And when that happens, uh, it pretty much means we can't make a wood fire anywhere in the state. National Park, Forest Service, anywhere. Dunzo, you're not lighting it. The only thing that's allowed for campfire purposes is propane fire rings. And propane fire rings are okay, but there's one problem, and that is most of the commercially available ones that you're gonna find, well, they don't make a lot of sense for packing and moving around. They're kind of big, they're kind of awkward, plus you couple that with a you know, 20 pound propane tank, and you got a lot of kit that you're dragging to the woods, ostensibly just so you can sit around it at night and literally burn money. But I get it, a fire's nice, and it's an important thing to have. Well. Lately, there's been kind of a fad. Companies have been taking this good old piece of American surplus hardware here and using them to create a portable propane campfire. That's cool, it's a great repurposing thing, but the thing is is that a lot of these companies are those kind of companies that, you know, they like to use the word artisanal a lot and charge you three times more than what the product's actually worth. Well. Sadly enough, you're paying the overland tax with these things for sure because they all retail around $200 for what is ostensibly a piece of $20 United States military surplus. Or in, I'm gonna put together a list of parts and you can go ahead and order these parts if you want, get them and play along. We're, we're gonna do an arts and crafts project together today and we're gonna make our own propane fire pits for less than $100. Well, as far as tools, it's not gonna be really much out of the ordinary. You know, I'll just go ahead and make the damn thing, and then I'll put the parts list in the description below and the link to everything you're gonna need tools-wise too, okay? All right, so here we go. Step one, it's getting your can. This was 20 bucks at the hardware store, but essentially, here it is. Now, take that lid off. Set it to the side. We're not gonna need it for a while. All we're gonna be focusing on is this portion of the can, the lower half right here. We're gonna make some cuts, we're gonna put some pipe in, and uh, we'll, you'll see. All right, now that that idiot's done talking, I'm gonna give you the instructions. First, you're gonna take a three quarter inch hole saw and knock a hole in the side of the can as shown. Okay, so we've discovered that maybe the overhead shot isn't gonna be the best thing that works, so I'll just try to set the tripod up down over on the ground so you can see. But essentially, we got that back hole knocked out. Now, I'm gonna save you all the hassle I found out and tell you that in addition to this hole you just put in, go ahead and use that same three quarter inch hole saw to put one right here. Trust me, this will be important. Now get a hold of those brass fittings. We're gonna take the 3 8 inch outer diameter by one half inch MIP fitting and couple it to one end of the two foot section of one quarter inch inside diameter copper tube. At a certain point, you'll have it on there and you can start bending the pipe into shape. It's going to serve as the burner element for your fire pit. Once you get the shape worked out so that the MIP fitting will slide into that offset hole we said was going to be really important earlier, get you some channel locks or big pliers and crimp off the open end of the tube. Next, you'll take that 7 64th drill bit and punch some holes approximately an inch to an inch and a half apart into the top side of your burner element. Now slip the MIP fitting through the offset hole like so. Please note, we didn't use washers here and now ours rattles like crazy. It's not that I didn't think to use them, I just ordered the wrong size. Next, grab that other brass fitting and screw it on until it won't turn anymore. Now it's starting to look like something, right? Now get out your sheet of expanded metal grating and lay it out like so. Pick a line to mark so that once we cut it, you'll have about a quarter to a half an inch of room between the sides of the can and your sheet. When it comes to cutting, 
This can be done with a hacksaw, but if you want to get really fancy, a cutoff wheel or a jigsaw with a metal blade would make short work of it. Just don't try to use a sawzall. It's not very safe. Once you get a cut, you're going to want to fold it. Now, I don't know any other better way to describe this than you want an equal amount off of either side when you initially fold it, which kind of will be about three inches because you can use a two by four like this to then wrap it back around. And essentially what this does is make a inch and a half tall riser that will go inside of here and protect that burner and give it a shelf for you to put things like lava rocks on top of. I also might want to add that gloves would probably be a good idea here to keep you from, you know, cutting your hands up while doing this. Now, if you just want to complete this as novice level, this is a completed ammo can pit. Now, if you want the deluxe model with the window upgrade, keep watching. Make a mark three inches from the bottom of the can. Now line your square up. Had I been thinking, I'd have made a corresponding measurement and mark on the other side of the can as the can's kind of tapered and the framing square didn't leave a square line as you'll soon see. Make your first mark at an inch and three quarters, then every two and a half inches across the can. Now I hate to make you do this, but go ahead and pull out the mesh screen and burner. You'll see why I'm doing Center punch your holes. Then throw on the two and a quarter inch hole saw and drill baby drill. When you're all done, it should look something like this. For that upper row, measure five inches up from the bottom of the can and make your first mark two and seven eight inches in from the edge with the same two and a half inch spacing between the hole centers. Next, measure and cut two pieces of expanded metal approximately 10 and a half by five and a half inches, then lay them out over the top of the window holes. What you're going to do is ensure the expanded metal covers the window holes, then make some marks for the rivet holes. Try to find spots where a rivet can use a washer to engage the mesh, but won't cover up one of the window holes. Then drill the holes using an eighth inch drill bit. Hang the expanded metal into position and secure it by using the pop rivets with one of the eighth inch fender washers as a backing plate. Sometimes you might not get one that works out right and that's okay, just drill it out with the eighth inch drill bit and put a new rivet in until it's secure. After the windows are in, put the burner and the tray back in and get ready. To use your ammo can fire pit, remove the lid and connect the regulator hose to a 5 or 20 pound bulk propane tank and the fire pit. Open the main valve on the propane tank and crack the regulator slightly. Use one of those long stem barbecue lighters to go through the first hole in the center of the side. Once it lights, adjust the flame with the regulator and turn it off to extinguish the flame. Once you're done, close the main valve on the propane tank and disconnect the regulator hose and store it inside the can after it is cooled. Now it goes without saying, please be careful. This is an open flame source in the woods. And even though that this is a safer version, a safer version still doesn't mean be stupid. So never leave this unattended and always be ready to shut it off or fight a fire if you have one. I hope you've enjoyed this. Let us know in the comments if you have, and if you decide to build one, we'd love to see it. So post it to your social media and tag us. You can find us on Facebook and Instagram at Secondhand Overland, and we'll promise to do our best to reshare. Until next time, be good.